Hi there! We're gonna finish the last block in forecasting and actually I'm, we're gonna cover one of my favorite topics ever, which is dynamic regression model. So the idea is, let's build on top of linear regression and if you remember, the basic idea was that of course there is a linear relationship between the regressors x1 and xn and the output y, but it was some strong assumptions related to the noise and actually we were focusing all the time in normality, but we never check actually the statistical independence of the errors or even correlations. But now we have covered ARIMA and the, basically the main ideas in ARIMA is related to these correlations between the noise. So one possible question is, okay, what if now include some sort of correlations into the noise? So what, what is going to happen? And we're going to cover that in this first video. And the second question is, what if we also have some correlations between the predictor, sorry, the output and the output at different times, but also some lagged correlations between the regressor and the output, meaning that not only we're going to focus on shifted values of the y, but also shifted values of the x. So in a nutshell, for regression of time series, there is a lot of room of improvement. Okay, so here we go. So let's combine, let's say, the, the ideas of linear regression with the ideas of Harima. And, he, and here is the most general model that we can write in that regard. So we're going to focus just on one-dimensional predictors. So basically we have one input and one output, and this is the way in which we are going to write the model. So basically you can see here that RMI is included in the noise part. Here I have the output and here I have some combination of the input. So this omega and delta are linear combinations of the parameters. So let, let me explain you this a little bit. So whenever I apply omega, which is an operator of this shift parameter b, what I'm doing is taking the value of x at the same time and multiply by omega zero. This would be like the good old beta one in, in, in the traditional fitting framework. And then I'm going to take omega one times xt minus one and so on and so forth. So basically when I'm applying this omega operator, I'm taking a kind of multidimensional regression in which each variable is the same, but shifted a different value s, okay? And what about this delta? Here is dividing, and this is harder to understand because what does it mean to divide by a polynomial of the shift operator? So the way in which you can understand this, if you go and take this delta and multiply in the other hand of the equation, basically this delta is a kind of autoregressive part. So basically this is playing the same role at this bracket here in this part. So again, whenever I have this delta applied to something, it could be x or it could be y, actually it's going to be y all the time because I'm going to move this to, to the direction. I'm taking the value of t, the value of t minus one, and so on and so forth, okay? So a, a couple of ideas, so y is going to be the dependent output variable and delta and, and the index r is going to control how many points in the past are going to affect y to, uh, to itself. x is the independent or explanatory input variable and the, par the parameter s is going to give us how many lags, how many times in the past x is going to affect the future of value of y. Then the, the parameter nu is an arima of coefficients pdq as usual. And now we have to, to understand that we can start at xt, but also we can start at a different lag. So we don't require to the first value of, la of the lag to be zero, like in, in this case. So we can also make a kind of shift of the time parameter. So this is the most general model that we can handle with linear regression, but first we're going to start with something simpler. So the simplest idea can be grasped using a basic linear regression, but instead of having uncorrelated noise, we're going to have RMA noise for this part of the model. Okay, this framework of dynamic regression models ba basically requires determining the orders R, S, and B, and the values P, D, and Q of the R minus model. And this is not simple. And there are a couple of ways in, you in which you can do that. One is the traditional framework of Box and Jenkins. And the most uh, modern one, which is the, um, due to Liu and Hansen and Pankrat, but also incorp incorporated in the last versions of the book by Box and Jenkins. And, and the idea is that you can think about regression as a kind of dynamical system. So you, we have an output signal, we have an input signal, and this is a kind of black box in which we are doing Laplace operators and uh, transformations of the data in order to go from this to there. Okay, this framework was as I was saying, was not present in the previous versions of the Box and Jenkins book, but in the last versions is the dominant uh, part. So in, in part three of the book, which is a, a wonderful book actually, you, you, can, you can see how this linear transfer function methodology is applied. And actually this part is due to Greta Leung, we took the witness of, of the original authors, Box, Jenkins, and also this guy in the previous versions of the book, Reinsel. So I recommend strongly this book and, and you can learn a lot in time series analysis, but of course this is out of the scope of this course. Actually, you could spend a few months only working on time series, so let's move on. But before we move on, so let's define the cross-correlation function. So the idea of the 
the other correlation function for one variable was try to see the correlation between y and y at different lags. So the, the our correlation function for two variables, also called CCF, is the same, but basically we're fixing y and we are moving x at different lags. So basically this is telling us that we have a mild correlation between them. So you can see that almost all the bars are inside the dashed blue lines. If we have simple correlated x and y, so this is the scope of linear regression, we will have something like this, so a strong correlation at zero, at lag equals zero, and everything is uncorrelated for different times. And now we can include more, more details. So for instance, we have correlations and at different times, so probably y is going to depend on x at different times, and we can also have lag and correlation. So basically here you can see that the first important value for the x is not uh, x equals zero, t equals zero, or t equals the same for y, so basically this is saying that the most relevant parameter is going to be x shifted by an amount, in this case by 5. So we're going to learn how to understand this sort of diagrams and we can use this sort of mm, correlation functions in order to understand better these models. Okay, so let's simulate some models. So let me introduce a function that I've created using basic R functions. So you can download actually from this address and, and you can play around with it. So the idea is the following. So we're going to take a predictor x. Omega is going to be the coefficients of the numerator in this, in this general model. Delta is going to be the coefficients in the denominator. And B is going to be the initial lag. Okay? So the first thing that we can do is take this model and decide which lag we are going to use. Remember that the lag with capital L function is included in the library quant mod. And you're going to imp import that library using this script. And now we're, we're going to define a new x, which is the old one, minus B. So this is going to be the starting point of the regression. Now the autoregressive part, why I'm calling this autoregressive, remember that basically if you take this delta and put that on the other side, I'm going to take yt and then delta 1, yt minus 1, delta 2 times yt minus 2. So this is sort of autoregressive in the old-fashioned uh, meaning of the word. And finally we're going to have this convolution part, which basically is I I'm taking different coefficients inside this vector omega and multiplying by different time shifts, okay? Inside this function that I've created, you have this function filter, and this filter is a standard function in which you can do a convolution or simply a recursive multiplication of some coefficients by some variables. Okay, so now forget about the details, and let's play a little bit with this data, okay? Of course, this, sim this simulation is not including the drift and it's not included the arima function, but you can add it simply a constant and you can create with arima sim any function you want and uh, sorry any series you want and then add to this function okay but this is not the focus of this video okay so let's import this function that you, you can uh, download that as i was saying and then let's create a, a very simple predictor so this predictor is going to be zero except at time equals 10. so you can see here that you have this jump here this is a a kind of impulse function and this is going to be really useful for some applications for instance in 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 this year yeah, they are trying to understand for instance the state of alarm in different countries can be modeled with this sort of impulse okay and now what if we take y and we simulate this this filter this function taking just b equals one and all the all, uh, all, all the functions omega and delta equals to the basic one in that case you you take a function y which is x shifted just by one position. So if b equals 2, then we would have this impulse, shifted 2, and so on and so forth. What about the correlation function? You can see that we only have a spike there, telling us that x and y are basically the same, but you can see that this red line, this uh, correlation that I've been plotted here with a b line, is at uh, like equals 1. So here what I'm saying with this diagram, I'm realizing that x is the same as y, but measure at a different time. In this case, t equals 1. Okay. So now let's see the, the role of delta. The delta, remember that this is the denominator, but when you plot that denominator to the other side, this is a kind of auto regression with y. And you can see something like that. So we take we took this impulse, and then we have this kind of a smooth decay, this exponential decay. What about the correlation function? And this remembers pretty much what we realized with the auto correlation function. Remember, when we were studying our processes, we saw the auto correlation function produce this sort of diagram. So even with uh, with just one coefficient, so one remember that this is a vector. So this is a vector one component, meaning that I'm, I'm only taking correlations between y and y t minus one. You can see this is a kind of artifact that is related to these correlations. But you can see that that this is also translated this into the cross correlation function. What if delta is larger? Then you have a slowest decay. So the, remember that the the exponential here 
is kind of the logarithm of 1 minus 0.9 in this case. Okay, next ingredient is omega, and in this case omega, remember, is in the numerator, so this is giving us a regression telling us that y is going to be 1 times xt plus 1 times xt minus 1. So this is the first time in which we are introducing some lags in the x. Okay? And you can see that basically what you're doing here is taking the y and you have, uh, in this case, uh, a duplicate at different times. So you will start with one impulse and now we have a one impulse at two points. Okay? What about the correlation function? You can see that y is equally correlated with x at time 0, at lag 0, and x at lag t minus 1. This is because the coefficients are 1 and 1. What if one of the coefficients is smaller? Then you can see again that at one time we have a larger correlation than at the other time. So th these simulations actually are going to give us some insight and in order to, to check cross-correlation functions and try to decide how many pa parameters would you need to, to model some correlation between different variables. This is not easy and I'm going to devote that for another video. Okay, you can you can take a look at this uh, this book, which is a wonderful book, and here you have some examples of this. So this is the impulse function that I was using, and you can see the effect. For instance, this is the same example as before. If you take uh, omega with two coefficients, then you see something like that. Omega with three coefficients, uh, depending on the on the ratio of the coefficients, you're going to see this kind of triangle. Now, if you take delta with one coefficient, you see this exponential decay, and so on and so forth. So at any of these diagrams, you can read them very easily so basically wh whatever is multiplying the y is in the denominator here and whatever is multiplying the x is in the numerator and then if you have this coefficient this shift b to the q it means that we are starting x and t minus q mi minus 3 in this case or minus b in general okay so let's stop the video and let's do some tutorial first i'm going to focus in the simplest example in which uh, this is not a function it's just a couple of constants and all, all of these are uh, zero except the first ones and I'm going to de define beta as in the old times as omega zero divided by delta zero.